Hello again guys and welcome to another Flight Deck 2 Sim tutorial. Today we're going to fly an RNAV approach into Dublin, landing on runway 34, uh, and I'm going to talk you through how we set up for an RNAV approach, a bit of the background knowledge, and then we're going to fly it using my operator's procedures. So you might be asking, what is RNAV? Okay, so RNAV stands or is short for area navigation. In a nutshell, this basically permits the aircraft to navigate without the use of ground-based navigation aids. So traditionally aircraft would navigate using VORs or NDBs. Nowadays with GPS we can navigate using that system without having to rely on something like a VOR or an NDB on the ground. Now if we apply this to an approach, an RNAV approach is basically an approach sorted by the, uh, supported by the Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS, which is GPS or GLONASS or something like that. Now, to fly this, you need to have two FMCs, which we do, to accurately monitor the system, and then we can fly that approach perfectly legally. Now, my operator has approval to fly uh, RNAV GNSS approaches, which is what we're going to be doing today. So here is RNAV GNSS runway 34. Now, there's all different types of ways of flying this, uh, and we have the uh, operational approval to fly LNAV VNAV and LNAV minima. So what do you need to know about the two? Well, LNAV uh, minima, the one on the right, is treated like a non-precision approach. Uh, LNAV VNAV minima is basically an RNAV approach with vertical guidance based on a barometric vertical navigational system, which is VNAV. So you must use VNAV to fly this type of approach. For an LNAV approach, we would still use VNAV, but it isn't required. You could use another mode, like vertical speed. Now, just before we fly this, I'll let you know where we are. We're holding at this waypoint called Sorin at 6,000 feet. And when we're ready for the approach, we're going to leave Sorin, go direct to Amdil, and establish on the inbound track to runway 34. Just before we do that, I want to talk about one more thing, and that's RNP and AMP. So if I bring up the FMC here and expand it, and go to the legs page, you have something called RMP, which is Required Navigation Performance. We must fly within this during the approach, otherwise we can no longer fly it accurately. Uh, then we have something called ANP, which is the actual navigational performance of the aircraft, and this is the FMC's estimate of the current aircraft position. But we need to change this figure because for all approaches, it's a little bit more limiting. It's 0.3 nautical miles. So now I've changed that. If the ANP exceeds the RNP, get a message on the scratch pad saying unable required navigational performance and we can no longer fly that approach. Excellent, so just before we fly it uh, I just want to talk you through the setup. Uh, so descent page, uh, I haven't got anything there because we're uh, 250 below 100, you do this in the, the uh, cruise usually. Forecast is blank, all I've got is a QNH of 1007. Frick swings in for runway 34, I've got a 10 mile ring in to configure for flat 1, a 4 mile ring but gear down flat 15 and the actual approach now when you brief and set up this in real life it's very important that when you do all the points match up especially for an RNAV approach so if I go to plan and can step through this after soaring we need to make sure the inbound course of track meets very accurately so it says 298 12 miles we've got 299 12 miles one degree is fine okay uh, abdox is a very important point this point here it's got the final approach fix we must be at 3,000 feet at this point we have 3,000 as a hard altitude and we also have speed restrictions as well what's very important is this three degree glide path okay this is not a traditional ILS glide path it's a glide path in space and time and this must match that figure there to ensure we're descending on the right profile and there we have three degrees now it's worth noting there's no uh, ground navigational aids required for the approach however if you look at the missed approach it says climb on 340 to BAPTA 3000 feet and then turn left 150 to DAP okay which is Collins down okay so if you look at BAPTA it's based on radial 341 on the Dublin VOR so if you look here if I go back to the map display we have the VOR tuned okay we've got the frequency 1149 so we can use the VOR in the event of a missed approach and that is pretty much it let's go and fly it so let's do the descent checklist first so descent checklist this is very similar to the one from my company pressurization we verify we have the land out set so that's 250 in dublin which it isn't so we can set that now anti-ice is currently off approach briefing fuel we would discuss that is altitude bugs We've got the minimum set for that approach which is 490 and a vref uh, 136 flat 40 so that's checked and set so imagine we've contacted ATC and they've, uh, we said we're ready for the approach and they've cleared us to route direct to Intop. So what I'll do, I'll bring Intop to the top and execute 
leave it in LNAV and that's going to route us nicely direct to hit top. We're just going to maintain 6,000 feet now before we commence the descent. Okay, so I've just updated the cruise altitude to 6,000 feet to generate a top of descent point. So after this point, VNAV will command a descent. So at this point will be something like a flight deck to sim to Dublin approach request descent and uh, approach. And it's a flight deck to sim, you're cleared to descend to altitude 3,000 feet. So, uh, to say that is now set, so we check on the uh, FMA, we have 3,000 feet checked. Now, because we're in altitude hold, the aircraft will not descend automatically and you'll sh uh, soon see the VNAV profile descending below us. However, we can now start descending and there goes the VNAV profile. So if I use VNAV, the aircraft is going to accelerate the econ speed uh, descent, which is 240 knots, and maintain this descent profile. And it's gone to VNAV path. VNAV path, just to remind you guys again, is doing everything to fly this profile accurately do a fantastic job doing a CDA to the approach. The waypoint at in top is 3,000 feet and above. The actual altitude we're going to be at 180 knots is going to be slightly higher. I'll just update the speed. There you go. See, we're going to actually be crossing in top at 4,001 feet. So it's always a good idea to delete that restriction to see where we're actually going to be at. Uh, approaching the decel point then, what will VNAV do? It will start to descend the aircraft. Now we're back on the VNAV profile. The uh, aircraft VNAV path commands the auto throttle to retard and enter arm, meaning that we can move the thrust levers to uh, control our speed. So we can continue descending the approach from there. So the speed is getting a little bit fast, so I'm just going to use a little bit of speed brake here. Remember in VNAV path, it does not care about the speed, do everything to stay on this profile as we move towards it. So now the speed's coming back in, I can stow the speed brake slowly. And there we go. Now we've passed the decel point, it's now commanding the up speed. So other considerations we need to do is also the approach checklist. So when we do the approach checklist, uh, we check the frequencies. Well, we only have the Dublin VOR tuned for the missed approach, there's not too much to worry about there. Check what range rings we have. Okay, so uh, let's have a look in the FMC. We have range rings of 10 and 4 miles, as I discussed at the beginning, and they're set. Standby instruments are set, we're no longer using an ILS, so we don't have to understand the approach. And we also have the inbound courses for the approach, so we check on the chart, uh, we have 340, and they're set once, twice as well. And then we could do the approach checklist, which is altimeters and instruments, and second cross change, approach change is checked and set, and we don't have standby ADI on the company. So, it's a bit foggy, a bit misty there today, but it's still VMC conditions uh, down there. The visibility is more than five kilometers. All right, so uh, it's very important because we're flying this approach in LNAV and VNAV minima, we have VNAV engaged after this point here, the final approach fix. But we're gonna use VNAV now because it's doing a great job, so we don't need to worry about that. So approaching in top, uh, I'm gonna start configuring now as we're approaching 10 miles. So I'm gonna select flat one, and we have a speed stri restriction of 180 knots. So speed checked, open the speed window. Uh, so we want to say in VNAV path, and then I select flat one. So okay. A little bit fast, I was not paying attention there. If you look here at the approach chart, it does say here at in top max 180 knots, 180 in the FMC, and I'm doing slightly more of that. So I'll probably get a speeding ticket, no, I'm only kidding. All right, so now we're on the final approach track. Uh, we can match the inbound heading, which is three, four, zero degrees. Uh, just gone flat two. Didn't mention that. Sorry, just so I can set one eighty knots. The next speed restriction is abdox, which is one sixty knots. Okay. Uh, now we have three thousand feet set. We'll imagine that they've cleared us for the approach to descend with the procedure. Uh, now we can set the lower altitude past the faster the aircraft keeps descending. And what do we set? We set the um, descent altitude up to the nearest 100 feet which is 500 feet so we go 500 feet uh, we verify we have VNAV path as the end of F FMA sorry and then we open the speed window so we say speed into it and now the aircraft after abdox 3000 feet will descend as well so we need to maintain 160 knots I'm going to select flat 5 now, so I don't have to configure gear down flat 15 early, 164 knots is fine for today. Uh, I'm just going to maintain slightly above that maximum speed limit of uh, 160, which should be fine in real life as well. 
So approaching the uh, final approach fix abduct, it's very important that we monitor the RMP here, okay? So I don't know why it's not happening in, uh, in our aircraft. We get a cross-track error and vertical deviation here, but it's not uh, there in this case. But we can see our AMP is 0.07 miles. We've passed the final approach fix, and this must never exceed half of the RMP, so 0.15. Vertical deviation, well, is 100 feet, which would usually be here, but I'm not sure why it's in the FMC and PMDG. It's blank at the moment. The important thing is we monitor this during the descent to make sure we're on profile. You can see it's descending very nicely on that. Now, if you also look at the approach chart after abdocs, we have these distance altitude cross checks. So it's seven miles. We need to be at 2,490 feet, uh, and that's based on this distance here. Okay, seven miles. So we can check that when we approach that point. 7 miles, 2,490 feet, approaching 7 miles, and there we go, 2,490 feet, it's an incredibly accurate system, okay, uh, next thing we do is just carry on reading these altitude distance cross checks, that will be completed by pilot monitoring uh, during this approach, next one will be at 6 miles, 2,170 feet, see 2170 feet on profile so yes as I said again very very accurate system uh, pilot monitoring would also have something called the VSD up uh, vertical uh, situation display and he'd be monitoring this profile as well on that side so uh, approaching the configuration point of four miles I'll configure a little bit of sooner to give myself some time so I'll go gear down flap 15 we'll do a landing check just to flap smash the speed and we say start switches are in continuous. Recall is checked. Speed brake, we arm, verify we have a green light landing here down three green. Order brake is three set holding at flaps. Uh, so I'll select the landing flap now, which is flap 40 below 162 knots. So speed checked. And the wind speed is less than 10 knots, so it's 10 knots, so I can go VREF plus 5. Then complete the landing checklist. So we'd say uh, 40 required, we've got 40 selected and 40 displayed green light and landing lights. Well imagine we've been cleared to land, landing lights are on. So top of the white arc we need to set the missed approach altitude. So looking at the chart, the missed approach altitude is 3,000 feet initially. So we say set, oh, okay, that's a bit unrealistic. It should stay in real life in VNAV path. Uh, went to altitude hold as I set the missed approach altitude. So all I've done is re-engage VNAV path and updated the speed. So I'm not sure why it's done that. Okay. And then that's it. If we look out the window, we can see the runway and it should be bang on profile. Two reds, two whites with an R and approach. Sometimes a VOR or an NDB approach will put you slightly uh, high or low or if it's an offset left or right to the centre line. So if we're visual, uh, you can disconnect at any time. We didn't get the un uh, required navigational performance, so it's flown it very accurately. Top of the yellow arc, 500 continue, and then let's have a go flying this approach. Hopefully it'll be slightly better uh, my landings than the last few tutorials I've done. So we'll disconnect the autopilot and auto throttle. Uh, we recycle the flight director, so we've got the guidance and the event of the missed approach. And now we follow the happies, the precision approach path indicators. So we keep this picture, two reds, two whites, uh, all the way down. Slightly wider runway here, 60 meters than the usual 45. So keeping that profile, Minimums we say land or go around, so we're all stabilised so we can land. Keep it descending, keeping that two reds, two whites. Reducing for us slightly, there's three reds, so I'm going to pitch up slightly, don't want to get too low. Keep it descending, there's the touchdown, so four reds quite low now. Check, close the thrust levers, hold that attitude, hold that attitude, don't let the nose go down. Oh, floating a bit there, and we've touched down, not too bad. So speed break up, select reverses, and then we can run the aircraft to stop. 100 knots, 80 knots, 6 knots, I've cancelled the order break and what we do in real life, we put the reverses to idle and then we only stow them once the, once the thrust levers reach the um, stop the tent. Uh, oh look, there's a van there, I was about to exit there so I don't know what's going on, that's a bit of a, a similar, oh what's he doing, unbelievable. All right, so I'm just going to end the tutorial here because the van has blocked the runway. I can't believe that's just happened, all right. Anyway, uh, that was the RNAV approach tutorial, uh, flying the approach based on my operator's procedures. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, if you're interested in how to fly other approaches, I'm going to put this in my uh, approach playlist. I've got an ILS and a VOR 
approach there so you might find that interesting too. Don't forget to like and subscribe and if you have any questions about RNAV approaches uh, feel free to leave that in the comments section and I'll see you again for another flight decorative sim tutorial in the very near future. Take care, bye bye.